Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Today, let's take a look at the modular grid MIDI controller and its capabilities, for example, sending Sysicus data and its programming interface, which can be used for scripted events and timers. If you're interested, please join me in this video. Here we go. So I bought these from a Facebook ad and they arrived roughly two weeks later. I bought two controllers to test the snapping feature, the one with the four sliders, four buttons and four potentiometers and the one with the 16 potentiometers. This shipped in three boxes, the third box containing a USB Type-C data cable and some stickers. The build quality is good, but not as good as the photos in the ad might make you believe. These controllers are made from sturdy plastic, there are no metal parts, which makes sense since they snap together with magnets. The encoders, sliders and buttons feel sturdy and put up the right amount of resistance for controlled precise movements. Each control has its own multicolored LED. On the sides you will find one USB-C port and pin contacts that conduct electricity for that snapping feature and also a button that switches through up to four different control setups. The snapping itself is precise and easy and never fails but the magnets are not strong enough to lift up the adjacent controller. Okay. Let's connect this to a PC and start the grid editor, which you have to download from Intac's webpage, link is in this video's description. It's available for all major systems. This app is divided into three columns. On the left side there are community codes, in the middle you'll find a representation of your current controller setup, which is updated live once you change its orientation, and on the right there's the actual editor for setting up the behavior of each UI element. There's a lot of options here and I won't go through all of them in this video. Basically, you can attach event handlers to each UI element that can be set up to do specific things. Click on the colored button to open a menu. Let's start by setting up the color of the LED. Now that was easy enough, now let's assign a MIDI command to that button. In this example I want to control my Reface DX because its MIDI implementation is complete. Each aspect of its sounds engine can be changed by MIDI commands. Most of the Reface DX parameters can be controlled with MIDI CC messages which are listed in its MIDI datasheet. For example I can control the level of operator 2 with CC number 102. So let's assign that to the top left potentiometer on the second grid controller. Now we can do this. Some of the Reface DX parameters can be controlled by sending SysX data only and that's where most other MIDI controllers have to give in. In the grid controllers there's a tab for that, so let's take a look at how to set this up. I want to control LFO speed with a second controller here. The table in Yamaha's manual doesn't seem to be very helpful at first. All we can see is there's a low byte we have to set to 12 and there's a value range of 0 to 127. Looking at the first table row we can see there are also high and mid byte values of 30 and 0 respectively. 
Two pages prior, you can find the structure of a system exclusive message for the DX. We want to make a parameter change, so let's follow the instructions. Bytes are written in hexadecimal code. Sysx messages always begin with F0 and end with F7. The age you can see in this manual refers to the hexadecimal encoding of this number, so leave that out when copying it to into the grid editor. Okay, so the first byte is F0 and the second byte is the vendor ID. Yeah, there's a table of vendors that have their own ID in MIDI code and there's a page where you can look that up. And as you can see here, Yamaha is 43. Next up is the device number and the Reface DX listens to all of them, so let's just use 10. Just copy the group and model numbers here, 7F, 1C and 5H. Next up are the four command bytes. Looking back at our table, these read 30012 for the high, mid, low bytes and val for the actual position of the controller. We can omit the checksum and just send the sysx end message F7. Save this. Now we can control LFO speed using this potentiometer. Last example for today, programming a timer in Lua. So the DX has only one LFO. Let's improve that by adding a very simple LFO using timers on the grid controller. To make that happen, we need to add the code block to the init, pot meter and timer tabs of the editor. Init code is executed once the controller is turned on. Pot meter code is executed each time you turn the knob. Timer code is executed each time a timer is called from within your script. Okay, for this simple example, I need to set up four variables. One memorizing whether the timer is active or not, and the timer interval in milliseconds. And I want to control LFO depth here with the middle position being neutral, so I have to define a middle, which in a range from 0 to 127 is 64. I also need to define a variable that contains the state of our LFO cycle and it can be in the higher or lower position from the middle. Now let's add code that fires every time you turn the knob. So here I first will determine the difference between the middle position 64 and the current position of the knob. Moreover, I will check if there's a timer running already. If the knob's position is bigger than zero and the timer is not running, we'll start a new timer with a given interval and set the running flag. And if the timer is running already and a potentiometer is at the lowest possible position, then we'll stop the timer. And last but not least, let's add some code to the timer tab. This only will be executed when the timer is running. We have two states I named tick and talk here. Depending on which state we're in, we'll add or subtract the difference we determined in the previous step from the middle value in each LFO cycle. We will print the resulting value to screen for debugging purposes and send them to MIDI as well. In this case, we're sending on channel 0, which is channel 1, command 176, which stands for CC data, and CC number 102, which is the level of operator 2 on the Reface DX, and the last value is a control value, which is the position of the knob. Once that is done, we'll start a new timer. And here's the result. As operator 2 is a modulator here, we'll have a change in tone in the given interval.
And here's some homework for you. Make it so that we can control the speed of this simple LFO with another potentiometer. Uh, by the way, if you like content like this, and if you want to see more tutorials on the grid control in the future on this channel, please consider subscribing and liking this video. And if you want to support what I'm doing here financially, you can become a Patreon member or channel member using the button under this video. Thank you very much. Verdict. I don't regret buying the grid controllers. They're certainly not cheap and the snapping feature won't make you the star of cocktail parties, but build quality is good and the well thought out editor and the ability to execute code and sysx commands certainly made this a worthwhile purchase for me. If that applies to you as well, it's up to you to decide. Yeah, and that's it for today. The modular grid MIDI controller, a purchase I don't regret at all. And if you found this interesting or useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.